Hello. Hello, Kim. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing pretty good. Nice to meet you. Good to meet you too. How are you? <laughs> good. I'm trying to change the view here so we can make it more of a, there we go. I'm great. I'm so excited to meet with you about this because when I saw that post, I was like, okay, this is, I need to know more. I need to know how to do this because it's such a frustrating topic for people, you know? <laughs> yes. Well, there are a lot of frustrating topics for people. I, and yeah. Unfortunately, um, many people chime in. And one of the things that I find the most annoying is folks who do not accept insurance and are constantly telling people yeah. what insurance does and doesn't <laughs> do. And I'm like, shut the hell up. Just shut the hell up. Because you don't know <laughs> what, what do you know about, about it? Right. <laughs> or you just have what you've conjured up um, in your mind. It's like I saw someone said once, Oh, I, I, you know, I was considering taking Medicare, but the paperwork is overwhelming. And I'm like, what paperwork? You write a note and you submit the claim like everything else. Yeah. It's not that hard. <laughs> it's, it's not that hard. And then I see all of these folks that are suffering when they do their Medicare applications and it's taking yeah. them five months and six months. And I was like, plus they have these credentialing people that do it and it still takes I five know. months, six oh months. And I'm gosh. like, my Medicare credential and application took 21 days. Yeah, I know. I know. It's crazy. It. And I had, an, I had an unintentional error in there. Right? Really? So they sent me the letter and they're like, you have, I'm like, oh, okay. I faxed them. <laughs> but like, I just followed the instructions. It is. That's what you I know. tell people. I'm like, it's a little overwhelming, but literally you just fill in the blanks and, and submit it and you'll be credentialed probably, you know. Yes. Don't make things up, which is what I tell people. <laughs> Don't be like, well, I said, it is frustrating, right? Because, you know, question 12 will be, what is your office address? And yeah. you put in your office address. <laughs> and then question 19E will be, what is your office address? I'm like, you can't write C14 in there. <laughs> like, you can't write C answer in 14. You're like, you just got to... Just put the, put the address. <laughs> just, just put the address. Don't fight with the system. Don't fight with the system. So anyway. Oh, my God. You're cracking me up. <laughs> Um, okay, so I, I've been recording, but maybe we could do like an official like introduce yourself and um, just we could just chat. I mean, whatever you want to say about any of it, it's fantastic. I just appreciate you doing this. And also, if you want me to pay a consultation fee, I'm happy to do that. Just let me know. Um, I, I know this is, you know, time's precious. So I'm happy to do that. Um, yes, I will send you. I'll send you. Uh, um, I, I remembered last night as I was going to sleep. I said, oh, I forgot to do that. Yes, please do that. I'm happy to pay it. Um, and and just so we're clear, is it okay with you if I show this in my Facebook group? If I show it in my my course to my course members, is that all right? If I yep. publicly yep. share it, okay. Yes, yes, that was that was part of the. Um, I can't think. The, uh, the waiver thing. <laughs> yes, the waiver agreement. Yes, it's it's completely fine. Okay, thank you. I really appreciate this. Um, and I was going to ask you, I saw in the post where you mentioned that um, I guess some therapist in a group like reported you or something and you actually yes. had to like fight with the insurance company. And I saw you talking about that as well. And I was wondering, could we get into that or do you, would you rather not? It's totally- Oh, sure, no. So, okay. you know, one of the things that happens, um, which a lot of folks, you know, therapists, including myself, we're not that great at business, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's so we will, sure. we'll, you know, we'll have our whatever, or 40 hours or 36 hours or whatever it is of continuing education credits that we need to take every license renewal. And many of us will take, you know, like 89. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we'll do that. Oh, but I want to do this. I want to do that. And um, it's unfortunate that, actually, I'm not sure this is true, but it is unfortunate that we can't like get credit for like business courses and things like that. I think we really should be able to, and I should look into that. I'm saying that, but I'm not sure if that is completely accurate. Right. In terms of, like if I took like, you know, maybe if something was called like, you know, financial accounting for therapists or something, it might, might get some credits, but I don't see those kinds of, um, I don't see those kinds of courses. No, uh, I know. Yeah. So we don't, we don't have a lot of, um, 
a lot of sort of information and, and classes and training around that. And so I think that's where a lot of this sort of misinformation comes from. And I, I want to preface this by saying I'm not a lawyer. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> not a lawyer, not an attorney. So you yeah. may want to check with your attorney. Although I strongly, strongly recommend that you check with an attorney, not just any attorney, just like how you won't go to an immigration attorney for your taxes and right. you won't go to a, a tax attorney for your divorce. Well, you might go to a tax attorney for your divorce. Depending. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> right? But, you know, they're each, they're specialty areas. And so you really want to go to an attorney that is well-versed in mental health matters and well-versed in mental health and insurance matters and stuff like that. In my search, there aren't that many. I know there's yeah. one There's one company down in um, San Diego that's sort of been doing some insurance work and I can't remember the name off the top of my head. Oh, okay. And then the rest of, yeah, they're involved with uh, a client who filed a lawsuit, I think, think against Cigna I don't really oh. remember okay. I think it was Cigna you know could have been United anyway but yeah. she filed a lawsuit against the insurance company because she was doing uh, out of network benefits and her therapist um, was a, uh, an LCSW mm -hmm. and so these are just fictitious numbers because I don't remember all the details yeah but let's say you know the therapist charged her a hundred dollars and then she submitted her claim to the insurance and the insurance paid her, you know, reimbursed her $35 because her therapist was um, an LCSW. But mm. if her therapist was a psychologist, uh, she would have wow. gotten reimbursed, you know, like $75. Again, these are just made up numbers, right, for, right. Know, for example. And so she was wow. like, this doesn't make any sense. I'm getting therapy and I'm not getting any, like if I went to a psychologist, I would not be getting any different kind of therapy. So why am I getting reimbursed less because my therapist is a master's level uh, clinician versus right. a psychologist. And so that company was doing something with that lawsuit. I, I don't know. Um, wow. I well, I'll try to happened. research it. If you, yeah. if you think of it, let me know, because I'd love to put it in the comments for people, because I'm, I'm always wondering about that, too. Like, who do you actually talk to about the stuff to get real answers? The insurance company is not clear. You can't really get anything definitive, well, you know? <laughs> yes. So this is the thing that this is one of the things that I think people really need to understand about insurance companies. OK, they're not they're not there for patients. They're right. Not there for patients. Right. Uh, they say all kinds of stuff and, you know, blah, 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 blah. Like my own personal insurance, uh, Blue Shield of California says, you know, we're here for you, blah, 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 blah. But between my premiums and my deductible, I would literally have to pay $16,000 before they start to cover anything, right? right? So I'm paying my premium and then I have a deductible. Yeah. So that's 16,000. I'm basically have, I was going to write the governor, but we're on a recall election here in, yeah. <laughs> in California. So I'm like, I need to have time for this, but it's just, a, but this is a, this is kind of an aside, right? Yeah. But um, I'm basically having insurance and I believe in having insurance and I believe everybody should have access to insurance and all that kind of stuff, but right, right. I'm paying lots of money to have to then pay an additional amount before anything is truly, truly covered. Yeah. And I'm like, so, and, you know, the previous administration, the previous federal administration, you know, they did whatever and they zeroed out. So you get penalized, I think, zero if you don't have insurance, the tax penalty. Oh, right. So I think it's now, pen I, I don't know, I'm, you know, I could be wrong, but I think it's penalized <laughs> to zero. Um, but it's like, I could not have health insurance and pay for all my health care myself right. and I come know. out ahead. And so I know. I'm that's like, the classic debate. It's like mine is basically catastrophic. I mean, if something terrible happened to me, would would be the only way it would really benefit me in the long run, you know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So so that's one thing. Insurance is they're not out for people. They're just not right. out for people. They're out for their shareholders and whoever else. And I Technically and personally, I don't have a problem with that, mm -hmm. but 
there is there's nothing there's really very little for the patient like i don't see why it has to be such a mutually exclusive process where it's either profits or patient there, there has to be a way like there has to be a way right like musicians right. do this all the time right? right you go to a concert you have a good time you pay money the musicians get rich but you also feel good when you go to a concert and i'm thinking <laughs> yeah. like, can't we do something like that like you know can we like <laughs> figure something out right. um, exactly so, so with that idea mm -hmm. insurances like the police they're not under any obligation to mm -hmm. correct misinformation. Right. And I think that is the thing that people have to understand. So simply because you call the insurance or you heard something, mm -hmm. the insurance is there on the no obligation to be like, that's incorrect. Right. Right. Exactly. Right. You yeah. know, like, so you got to think if you are lost, let's say you're in a town and you're like, oh, I, I need to go to the grocery store and you see a police officer. And, um, you know, you're driving and you roll, you stop and you roll down your window and you're like, hello, officer, where is ABC grocery store? And he says, okay, um, it's two blocks up and then make a left and you'll see it right there. Okay. And you go, okay. And you pull off and there's a stop sign and you don't stop at the stop sign. You go through the stop sign and he pulls you over. You can't sit at the police officer where you didn't tell me to stop at the stop sign. Right. <laughs> right? That's true. The right. The police officer's under no obligation to you to say, hey, it's two stops. You know, it's two streets over. Drive to that stop sign. Come to a complete stop. Drive to the next corner. There's a traffic light. Wait until it turns green. <laughs> yeah. They're not under any obligation to tell right. you that. Right? That's right. I, it's the same thing with insurance companies. Right. They're not under any obligation to correct misinformation. And I think yeah. that is one of the things that people don't understand. And, and so when you get that, oh, they don't actually have to tell me what's correct. Right. 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 Unless it's in their contract. And even then, the people that are usually answering the phone have no idea. <laughs> right. Oh, my gosh. They no. usually have no idea. So what I do when I'm having problems is I call the number because I always mm -hmm. want to make sure I do some due process. So I call mm -hmm. the number in the back of the card and I say, blah, 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 is my problem. And if they're not able to help me, they go, I'm not really sure, um, uh, you know, hold on. And then the supervisor comes on or they tell me to talk to the supervisor and they tell me some, I'm like, that doesn't even make any sense. Right. But can I talk to the supervisor? Oh, they're not available. Okay, when are they going to be available? Can they call me back? right like mm -hmm. i have to talk to someone got to escalate yeah. it up right right and then if i go to that person and they're still telling me something that doesn't make sense i'm like ceo level i'm not talking to anybody else i'm like ceo's office i'm tweeting <laughs> <laughs> and all of my problems awesome. get solved all of my problems <laughs> they get solved. yes nice. uh several years ago when beacon health options transitioned their reimbursement software into oh. a different software mm -hmm. it was a nightmare oh my gosh it's happening right, right now with blue cross blue shield in georgia and some other states yes. yeah mm -hmm. yes so i'm like what's going on so claims you know i'm seeing the claims are sitting in pending status pending status pending status pending status i call up and the person's like well you know contractually your claims can be paid in 45 days blah 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 which always annoys me when they say that i'm like yeah i'm sure you get paid which is the last time i sent something i said i'm sure everybody gets paid every two weeks right <laughs> why we're the only ones that are expected to wait for forever and whatever is happening because you know we don't have you know expenses exactly. to me um so after 45 days i called back i'm like okay it's still pending what's happening and they were like oh you know you're just gonna have to wait i'm like uh uh so I went onto Twitter and I tweeted the CEO of Beacon. I was like, wow, what is happening? And I said, and no one knows what's going on. The next day I get a call from a vice president of something. Wow. And so, a very nice guy, you know, we're, we're like, I'm like, so what's happening? He's like, oh, well, the system. And we didn't think we we're going to have problems. I'm like, I need your job. Because... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you don't think you're going to have problems switching over <laughs> literally hundreds of thousands of claims from oh one gosh, system right. to another system. <laughs> and then I said to him, I said, so also, 
why didn't you put it in the newsletter? I'm like, I actually read the news. I'm one of probably like one of yeah, the few people right, that actually reads to. these newsletters. But I I'm do like, too. <laughs> why didn't you put it in the newsletter saying on blah, blah, blah date, we're going to be shifting over. So please be patient with us. You know, we're all therapists. We're all excessively given. <laughs> it, right. Absolutely. <laughs> so I'm like, he's like, oh, well, we don't think people really read those. And I thought, then why are you spending <laughs> money printing it? I don't understand oh what gosh. is happening here. <laughs> So, but the next day, all of my claims, he's like, all right. And because I tweeted it, they don't like neg negative. Publicity. Right. They don't like negative. Publicity. Mm -hmm. So the next day, they actually process all of my claims manually. Wow. They had somebody process all of my claims manually. Wow. And my, the person in the office next to me, who's also a beacon provider, I think she got paid like, I don't know, like, four weeks later she's like you got paid i'm like oh yes I'm, i was some play she's like how did wow. you do that i'm like because it got processed manually they pulled all of my claims out and they process it manually so that they could respond wow. and say oh you know we've taken care of our providers but this kind of stuff doesn't need to doesn't need to happen they can be much more prepared again because they're not really in it for the patients and the providers they're not mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you know and if any of you are watching this and seeing this, I challenge you to come on Kim's show <laughs> or, yes. or come on my show or any yes. other show. And I'll be more than happy to go toe to toe with you about all of the nonsense that happens when we are trying to provide um, mm. uh, care, mental health yeah. care through, through health insurance. Anyway, Such a good that tip. A long story. That's so helpful, though. I'm going to I'm going to separate this part out, too, and just make a whole nother category around, you know, what to do when you can't get answers or help at the insurance company. Yes. And there it's are amazing. people. Yeah, there are people that are saying, well, I have I see sometimes I see things I haven't been paid since March. I'm like. Yeah, the insurance has a contractual obligation. They have it in their it's yes. in your contract. It says clean claims will be paid within X number of days exactly 40, most of them say like 45 days you mm -hmm. might have some that say 60 but most of them say 30 to 45 days right right if you haven't been paid since march you're beyond 60 days they're now Absolutely. in violation of their own contract you can call them out on that yeah you can call them out on that right and Absolutely. so all the people in georgia like joshua oh, sure. well i don't know if the governor of georgia is any good but I don't either, <laughs> but it's a good point. And when I finish this, I'm going to like message my member and tell her, you know, this is an option because she cannot get these claims paid. And it's because of the software. Yes. And I know somebody said what the glitch is. And I don't remember. You have to do, if they're an LLC, they have to do something with their NPI too. There's, yeah. It's something with the NPI. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's something with the NPI too. And I think you have to either like take it out and then put it back in or I think it's maybe like box 34 where you didn't have to put it in before you have to, there's something like that that is causing these claims um, not to get paid wow. but you know if every single provider who is not being paid in Georgia wrote their senator their respective mm -hmm. senator the governor the whoever else their insurance commissioner their United States Senator, their United States Congressman, and say, we, we're working for free. Right. We're working for free while the CEO of Anthem makes, you know, $75 million a year to do nothing. Wow. Because they literally do nothing. I don't yes. know how much she makes. She probably makes like $45 million a year. Whatever. Uh, something, something right. incredible. <laughs> right. Which again, I don't have a problem with, but then right. you gotta, you gotta be like, making sure that your providers are not having these ridiculous experiences, right? You can make a exactly. billion dollars a year. I don't really care. Um, you know, right. like Elon, Elon Musk made whatever, 620 billion, whatever billion he made last year, I forget right. the number I just saw, right? But, you know, folks are generally happy with their Teslas, mm -hmm. right? Right, so they're, right. They're, they're driving around and they're happy with their Teslas. Nobody's be like, right. ah, you know, my Tesla broke down again, my, you know, like, you don't hear the, I mean, there's some issues, but you know, my yeah, point yeah. is, is that you can make as much as you want as a CEO. I don't really care. Right. What I do care about is what my experience is as a provider. And are you investing 
in exactly. my experience as a provider, which then translates into my experience in into the experiences of clients. Right. And I don't think that insurance, you know, they have all these stuff and, you know, the reimbursement and claims processes, um, when there are problems, they're, you know, the vast majority of times it's great, but when there's a problem, it's like a nightmare. Yeah. It's such a nightmare. And it's absolutely there's, there's no reason for that. You can just create like a claims processing solving, like there, there are ways to do it, right? If right. one plane crashes, the you know, the FAA is like, whoa. Right. Let's fix right? this. What's the problem? Let's, yeah. Let's fix this. And <laughs> and something happens to the insurance company, they're like, oh, whatever, too bad. You know, we're gonna do other things, we're not gonna pay attention. So and that's what people need to understand. It's not right, you know. Also, I think people as much as they can have to try try to not personalize it because it can feel very personal if you haven't mm-hmm. been paid since March. But I, you know, harness that energy and you know, write people. Politicians are nobody likes negative publicity. Tweet. Right. Tweet. I love Write. it. Do you know you have a you have a you know lots of people talking about First Amendment rights these days about <laughs> see, you know First Amendment right. You don't you can't work for free. That's right? right. Yes. You can't absolutely. Work for free. And if you haven't been paid since January or February, you are essentially working for free. Right. And um, you know, you, that's kind of the stuff I but I'm a rabble rouser. That's kind of I love the it. stuff I say. You don't have to, you don't have to use my language. You can just be, you know, whatever. But I think you should folks could fight it within themselves to write a letter to their congressperson, to whoever, mm-hmm. to the CEO, send it to the CEOs. They don't like to get that stuff. Send it to the right. CEO, say, look, this is what's been happening since, you know, whenever. And mm-hmm. what are you going to do about it? Exactly. Such great advice. Um, and for those of you watching, you may not know, but I have a task force group that we started on Facebook for this exact same stuff. We meet once a month and we talk about things we can do to like disrupt the system and affect change. So um, I'm gonna be posting this video over there too. So people can watch us and get more ideas around how to get action for what they're going through. I appreciate right. that so much. Yes, um, and you could okay. also get your, sorry to interrupt. You could That's also okay. get your professional association involved, right? You can, it'll have even more leverage if you can form a task force with the National Association of Social Workers or the Counseling Association or your MFD Association in your state or your local chapter. And, you know, this is the, I used to be a board member for NASW in two states. Oh, wow. And the thing that always annoyed me is that people thought that there was like, you know, there's like, just these like, it's sort of, it was like an Oprah moment. Remember was, I was watching Oprah once and this was several years ago. She used to like my favorite thing show or something. And, oh, yeah. And they were talking about, <laughs> oh, and then we have the people, you know, like we have 30 people or something start doing this. And she's like, 30 people. She seemed a little taken aback. And they were like, how do you think those gifts get wrapped? <laughs> oh, <my gosh. laughs> and she was like, oh, oh. right, right. <laughs> so she, she was, you know, you know, in her Oprah. I mean, I love Oprah, Uh, you know, in her Oprah way, just a little bit disconnected, just a little bit disconnected about what happens, you know, sort of so many spaces removed, so many rungs removed from her, from her. Yes. And so I think people on the outside sort of removed from their professional associations don't understand that professional associations have usually have very skeletal staff. Mm-hmm. because it costs a lot of money to rent an office and pay people a living wage and stuff like that, which is why anybody who's listening, whether you believe in it or not, or, you know, what are they doing for me? It really helps if your professional association is large, just the sheer numbers, right? right. So um, join your professional association, pay the $200 or the three or whatever it is. It's also mm-hmm. a expensive. So. Right. <laughs> um, but <laughs> If, you, if you're part of a professional association, you can then say to the executive director or the president or whoever, I would like to form this task force and I have four people. And then yeah. you, you kind of have the blessing of the professional association. They can send emails out for you. So if you want to do like a letter writing campaign, you're not 
starting from scratch. They can put stuff mm -hmm. in the newsletter. People can see what's happening. And this is how you kind of gather momentum for <clears throat> providers and for clients. The, the tricky yes. part is a lot of this has to be sort of framed around clients because, you know, apparently professionals aren't supposed to, you know, have self-esteem. So, <laughs> right. But you can do a combination of Gosh. both, right? Because people be like, mm -hmm. oh, you just want to make money. I'm like, well, nobody ever says that to the neurosurgeon. Oh, you yeah. just want to make money. Never, never says that. Right. right. So, right. But this is just a way to sort of, you know, you talked about your task force of other mm -hmm. people. If you don't have a task force in your state or where you are locally, this is a way to do that. You could, it just needs four or five people. That's yeah. it. And it's usually a four or five people anyway. That do right. That are real, really willing to put in the, right. the extra effort. And then right. you do this and you move, you move stuff forward. You do a lot of education and, and things of that nature. So this is one way to, to do it. So thank you. This is such helpful information. I appreciate it so much. We we kind of um, got a little off topic because the reason I actually invited you here was because I, know, I, was, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait, we got to talk about this one thing. The reason I invited you here is because I saw your post on Facebook. I, I get this question all the time. I have an insurance billing course. I have an insurance billing membership. I have a free Facebook group. And people ask me all the time, do I have to take insurance clients if say maybe this insurance company you know pays a lower rate am i allowed to um you know pick and choose how many people i want to take on a panel basically and the overwhelming answer that we always get in the facebook group says yes you have to if you sign the contract you have to take on as many clients that are appropriate for you and if your doors are open and accepting new clients you have to take these insurance panels that you're contracted with so I've kind of been going under that belief myself and, and giving that advice to people until I saw your post on Facebook. And I was like, okay, this changes everything about the way I'm thinking about this. And basically what you were saying is that's not true. And I wanted to invite you on here to, to um, give this information to people. I'm going to put it on my YouTube and in my course and in my membership because I want people to know there's choices because I didn't even know that myself and I'm teaching people this stuff. So um right. I wanted to invite you and, and see if maybe you would just talk a little bit about that and let everybody know your perspective on that and your experience with it so they can learn from you. Yeah, so <clears throat> this is, so to go back to one of the very first things I said, which is that the insurances are under no obligation to correct misinformation. Right. It, it benefits them, right? Right. So they're not going to, so, what do they always say? We always see, oh, I'm trying to get on to Aetna, I'm trying to get on to Blue Cross, and they always say, oh, we have enough people, which is not right. true. It's not right. true. It is yeah. simply not true. Um, you know, uh, I, I'll get to you because I want to share this. So, you know, the reason yeah, I got please. on to Anthem Blue Cross in California, because I wrote there, I say, hey, I'd like to, they're like, we have enough people. And I said to them, I said, great. Can you <laughs> forward me the names of your Black African-American people that you have because I'm getting a ton of referrals and I don't want to have your members being, you know, chasing whatever that saying is, chasing their tails, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Because they can't get them, they can't find a member. If you have enough people, great. Let me know who those people are. So yeah. when I get these calls and these emails, I can just put it on the list and be like, here are, you know, six people that are available. Here are 20 people that are available. Mm. Instead mm. of getting a response to that, the next day... I got a FedEx application from the vice president wow. of some office to join the panel for Anthem. So wow. I know it's not true. I know right. it's not true. So this is, this is part of them sort of controlling. The thing is, is that the vast majority of people do not use mental health services via their insurance. Yeah. If you think of how many people there are that have health insurance, and if you think mm -hmm. of how many people that are actually in therapy, it's not that much. Versus right. the number of people that need therapy, <laughs> that need therapy, it's not that much. So the usage of mental health services via insurance is not that high. So mm, they're making money left, right, and center. So you know their incentive, they're, which is why I say they're not in for clients. You never see an insurance company saying, "We offer mental health services." You've never seen a commercial like that saying, right. "Please access our services because we have lots of." They don't do that because that's not what they're interested in. Mm -hmm. So 
that's the first thing to understand that messaging out there doesn't need to be corrected by the insurance company. They're under no legal obligation. Now one can argue ethically and morally, but legally <laughs> they're right. Not. Right. So the other thing to understand is that each insurance is a contract. Mm -hmm. People don't understand that. <laughs> and right. People mix and match and this, which I'm not even going to get into because that's going to probably <laughs> blow up the whole time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're going to get blown up with uh, comments. But <laughs> again, I'm not a lawyer, but this is right. just stuff, right? If I have a if you have a contract with insurance company A, that mm -hmm. is your contract with insurance company A. Right. It has zero to do with your contract with insurance company B. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, what do I mean by that? If insurance company A is paying you $55 for mm -hmm. 908-37, mm -hmm. and you have to file claims within... 45 days that is your contract with insurance company a right right if insurance company b is paying you 105 dollars for 90837 mm -hmm. and you have 90 days to complete your claim to file your claim that is your contract with insurance company b you cannot right. say to insurance company a well, insurance company B gives me 90 days to file my claim, so I'm going to do that. Or insurance company A is paying me $105. So you no. have, they're going to say, nope, your contract with us is for $55, and you have right. to do your claims within 45 days. That is right. your contract with that insurance company. Because you, cannot, you can't enforce mm -hmm. terms and conditions of a contract onto mm -hmm. parties who have not signed and executed and agreed to that contract. That's not how contracts work. And people exactly. have to understand for each insurance, you are in a contract, which is important to read your contract. Now, mm -hmm. not everything is in the contract. Some things are just, right. just gonna, kind of common sense, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, right. There's, there's nowhere in your contract, and you know, I'm sure somebody's be like, mine says that, great for you. <laughs> yeah. But there's nowhere in your contract where it says, each provider, right, is able to determine what client best fits them. That's not in your contract. That's right. just sort of a given. Right, of you course. Go, oh, I don't work with depression. I right. only specialize in uh, addiction. Right. So right. I don't work. I don't work specifically with people who are just depressed. If you're depressed and have an addiction, yes, I work with you. So if somebody calls up, you go, Hey, I'm sorry, you're not in my specialty. Mm -hmm. And here are a couple of referrals, or you refer them back to the insurance company, right? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. that's not in your contract. That, right. That right. There, that's true. Not, it's not in your contract where you can, you know, find serve who you're competent and, and capable of serving. That's mm -hmm. not in your contract. It's in details, right? It's right. a, it's sort of, it's a given. I forget what the legal term is, but again, I'm not a lawyer. Mm -hmm. So when we have that, what you then have to do is you got to go and read extra things. And this is how I found this out because I also worked in a hospital for many years and did utilization review. So this is how I know some of this. Stuff. Right. <laughs> um, every insurance. So people say, I would like to not take any more insurance clients from X company or Y company. And right. then a whole of those people say, no, you can't do that. Your contract says you have to. So I usually say to people, so if I, how does that work? Because if a client says, I want to see you on Sunday mornings, mm -hmm. right? do I have to? <laughs> no. <laughs> and if I don't have to take them on Sunday mornings, why do I have to take them on Wednesday? Like what's so special about Wednesday, right? So <laughs> right. that's kind of where I start because you have the right as a business owner to set your own schedule. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Right. Insurance mm -hmm. can't tell you you have to see people at six o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. Right. You have a, you're a business owner. So with that comes certain rights. And there was an article many years ago. I'm pretty sure it was in Forbes magazine. Or maybe it was the Wall Street Journal. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. Where the then... Um, director of the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid um, was talking about this very issue in which they said providers don't have to take clients from if they don't want to. Mm 
Mm. And anybody, wow. you can look and you can see that and Medicare and most insurance, which I think all of the insurance companies, they follow the guidelines of CMS, Centers mm -hmm. for Medicare and Medicaid Services, right? And yeah. you see physicians will say, we're not taking any new Medicare clients, but they're still seeing current Medicare clients. Right, so right, right. Because you can. So here's the thing that folks need to understand this, because there's this thing about payer source and all of this kind of stuff. It is not a private pay versus insurance issue. Mm -hmm. Again, okay. that is what people think. And again, the insurance companies don't have any, they have zero um, motivation to correct that because it's benefiting them. Mm -hmm. So what it is, it's a commercial insurance versus a Medicaid contract. Uh-huh. Okay. All right. And especially mm -hmm. now that everybody's got to register to be a med, you know, with your state to be um, to be a Medicaid provider in California right. becomes Medi-Cal. That happened mm -hmm. a couple of years ago when the federal government. California was one of the states where you didn't have to register oh. to be a Medicaid provider. There were 23 states where you didn't have to register huh. to be a Medicaid managed care provider, but now everybody has to register with the state. Now you don't gotcha. have to take state Medicaid, but that's right. where this comes from. That language in there about payer source. Right, because your contract with the insurance company is with the insurance company. Right. The insurance company cannot say, hey, Kim, you're paying John $100 in private pay mm -hmm. because you have an insurance that John doesn't accept. Right. Or you've opted not to use your insurance. That contract with the insurance company cannot be enforced, which is the other thing therapists don't seem to understand is that, Right. When you have a private pay client, you're in a private contract, which is why you sign all the paperwork. Those are right. your contractual terms and agreements, right? <laughs> With that private pay client. So you can't take the insurance contract and now impose it on the private pay contract because you can't mm -hmm. do that. Because right. Kim and John have not agreed to mm -hmm. Aetna's or Blue Cross or whoever's contract. Right? Mm -hmm. Kim and right. John have their own contract right. about what will happen and mm -hmm. how it will happen. Mm -hmm. And so this language in there about payer source, it's about commercial plans versus the Medicare, M Medicaid and Medicare mm -hmm. contract plans. Because mm -hmm. for many, for many, although the discrepancy has changed a little bit, but, but for virtually all Medicaid contracts, they pay much lower than commercial contracts. Right. Right. So right. a commercial contract might pay $100 for 90837. Mm -hmm. And then a 90837 for a Medicaid contract might be $65. Right. right? So right. that's a $35 difference. Mm -hmm. Even though it's the same, but it's a Medicaid contract and your commercial contracts, which people should know you have two different contracts. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Every company to, has its own contract. <laughs> every country has its own contract. Yeah. And when you do a commercial and Medicaid, you usually usually have either a completely separate contract or a subcontract for the Medicaid population because there are different mm -hmm. requirements from the state and the federal government and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And so that's the payer source that insurance companies are referring to. It's not private pay because what would happen is people would say, oh, the Medicaid contract person is only paying me $65. So mm. I'm not going to see any of those people right. after three o'clock. I will only see them at 10 or 11 or, you know, they only have like certain slots. And that is what that is about. It's yeah. about if you have a contract with Aetna, a mm -hmm. commercial contract and a Medicaid contract mm -hmm. that you can't say because... I'm only giving the commercial contract. That's the payer source. I'm right. only giving the commercial contracts um, any slots they want. Right. But the Medicaid people, the Medicaid mm -hmm. portion of your contract with Aetna, you're saying you can only come at between before two. Right. And that's where, that's where that controversy lies. So people need mm. to understand it's not a private pay thing because a private pay is a separate contract. Right. It's the, it's the internal, 
it's the internal stuff, which is understandable because you know, I, oft, I just, I often see this as well, where people say, I'm going to do pro bono. Mm -hmm. And then they create all of these rules about the pro bono. I'm like, if you're doing a good do pro bono, it's just like if the person is paying, except that they're not paying, you can't create special rules for your pro bono because mm -hmm. they're, they have to show gratitude and be deserving oh. of the free <laughs> services. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what was happening. It's like treatment yeah. and social work. There's this thing about the deserving poor. Mm -hmm. so you know you can come at 10 or 11 in the morning but I can't see you at six and right. what a lot of people don't understand there are a lot of people who actually work full-time jobs but are on Medicaid yeah oh yeah absolutely mm -hmm. right so telling those people you can only come at 10 in the morning mm -hmm. <laughs> when they have a nine-to-five job or a 10 to six job right. that usually have are not flexible mm-hmm Right. All right. You're, you're right. not flexible if you're, uh, you know, if you're a janitor or a teacher's aide or something in a, you know, in a income bracket, usually those jobs are not very flexible in terms of when you show up and when you can leave. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, and there are right. a lot of jobs like that, even if you're not a right. Market, like, you know, if you're ER nurse, you sure. can't be like, oh, I got to go to therapy. I'll be back in two hours. <laughs> you, know, you can't, you can't <laughs> <Right>. do that. <laughs> no. Right? So, so that's where that, that, that's because it was such a big problem. So that's why insurance companies started including that in there, that you okay. can't discriminate in their, in their contract and their payer source, Medicaid, Medicare versus um the commercial contracts gotcha okay that makes right. sense okay so that is that so that's like one part the right. sort of the other part to this is that you're a business owner you have a right to you know you can see whoever you want if you want to um not see clients from a certain insurance every single insurance and i tried to post excuse me, I tried to post the links when I can. Every mm -hmm. single insurance has a provider status update form. Yes, that's and what you, I saw you talking about, right? Yes, mm -hmm. and you fill it out. Some of them have them online. Some of them, you paperwork, you can just Google. You can just Google and you'll find them. And then you fill it out. And there's a box that says not accepting new clients. Mm -hmm. And then you send it in and there you go. And that's and, it. And this, that's it. In the state of California, I don't know about other states, but in the state of California, uh, recently passed a law several years ago, like maybe three or four years ago, I don't remember exactly when, that says that you can actually stay in that non-accepting client state for up to one year. I don't okay. know. I don't know what other states, um, if they have limits or if it's six months, you know, I, you know so you'd have to check your state. But... <clears throat> This is what I got reported for by somebody from someone in this group because I said, no, you can actually do it. And so they reported me and I do, have, I do, I have the email. I think I read it somewhere. I was yes. like, oh my God. <laughs> I have the email back and forth. Again, insurance company, they don't, you know, so the guy was right. like, we have, a, you know, and this is how I know somebody reported me because it says clearly in the email, we have received notification right. from right and there's this this there's no client <laughs> no client that's doing that and the reason right. why i know there's no client because this conversation was between beacon health options which i'm no longer a panel member for mm -hmm. um and they would call me mm -hmm. okay to, to get because there was a special contract through kaiser and stuff like that so they always call me to see if i had space and we had a mm -hmm. pretty good rapport because I always tried to probably too much, but I always try to accommodate their clients and uh, because they have a specialty in eating disorders. Oh, um, yeah. There weren't a lot of, they didn't, I think I was probably like the only one for like 500 miles or so. Wow. So they would call and try to negotiate. Well, oh, please, can you, you know, can you squeeze this person in or can you just do an assessment and see how they, you know, like that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and that's the company where the representative emailed me and said, basically, um, we got a report that you're saying that you're not taking new clients. Are you planning to resign? And I went back and said, I'm not planning to resign. What's the problem? Yeah. I'm like, well, you have to resign. And I was like, nope, I don't. 
I do not have to resign. And I don't know what you're talking about. Um, I do not have to resign. And I sat back and I said, I'm in my, within my legal rights. And I said, you know, stop trying to infringe on my First Amendment rights as a business owner. And I quoted the California law that says, I can do this for up to a year. Wow. And then they wrote back and like, oh, we're not trying to infringe on your rights <laughs> and we're not trying to do this. Where you said that you completed the form. I said, that was the first response in my email. I completed the form. All you had to write back at that point and say is like, wow, thank you. When we look in our system, we don't see that information. Do you mind just resubmitting it? That's all you have to say. That's not what he said. He right. went in this whole thing about I have to resign and blah, 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 and all this kind of stuff. So I guarantee you, mm. once he got my second one, he probably went to league and they're like, oh, let's not mess with this guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's not mess with this guy. You can uh, see the very tone shifted once I wow. told, sent him the California law told him that he was infringing on my First Amendment rights, told him mm. that the Center of Medicare and Medicaid does actually say you can do this. You wow. can say you're not accepting new clients. You don't have to mm. say you're full. You don't have to say any of that. What you're contractually and legally required to do is just fill out that provider update form mm -hmm. and you say, I'm not accepting new clients. The Cigna form even has, you can say, accepting by referral only. Yeah, which means Cigna can call you or a doctor can oh. call you and you can talk with them and see, see whether or not um, you want to. And I've had insurance company call me because, again, I have I specialize in eating disorders. And, you know, sometimes they'll be like, ah, oh, we have this client. They want a provider of color. And I'm like, yeah, I know I'm the only one for like 500 miles. Wow. <laughs> that accepts insurance. <laughs> not that I'm the only eating. Right. Disorder, right. That accepts insurance. And so they'll call. And I, sometimes I'll say, well, they can see me, but actually right now, the only time I have is 11 o'clock on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And so if they can make that, I can see them. But if they can't make that, I'm like, I'm not adding on an eight o'clock slot at night because, you know, right. you all need to get more providers. Right. That's not my, exactly. <laughs> that's not my problem. <laughs> so the, um, so that is, that is part of the, uh, that is part of what you can do to not take insurance from okay. new clients from insurance X, but still continue to take insurances from Y. Okay. It is also what you can do if you're thinking, you know what, this particular insurance company is paying me $45 for 90837. I've asked them for a raise like four times. Mm -hmm. They said no, but I have like three clients that we're really doing some work yeah. on. And then you can just put yourself, you can say, you know what, put yourself not accepting new clients mm -hmm. and, um, and just keep it like that. And when those clients are done, mm -hmm. if they're done, then you can just resign. You can just resign from the panel. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that's, that's so one helpful. way. That's, that's another way to do it. You know, it, it can be tricky, but yeah, you do not have to keep taking clients forever. And yeah, no, to, that's so helpful. And, and you don't have to come off of the panel. You can just put yourself as not available mm -hmm. on, on what, whichever insurance company and still keep seeing people. Or you yeah. can put yourself on all. At one point, I did put myself because I was getting way too many referrals. So I just put myself on all referrals. Mm -hmm. I even just had another, <laughs> this happened several months ago, where an EAP wrote me one of these. Again, we're concerned about your availability. I'm like, what are you concerned about? I'm not available. <laughs> <laughs> so, so they wrote me but this kind of we're concerned about your this you know this kind of very ominous sounding letter right yeah again because insurances they don't have to tell you that right. you know they don't have to say oh we're just trying to bully you they don't have to tell you right that. right so it was really a bullying kind of letter we're con wow. it's ominous we're concerned about da, your availability and we've made the because the, 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 they send me emails i'm like i'm not responding to that y'all figure it out y'all need to get more providers that's your mm -hmm. issue right. i don't need to be more available you need to have more providers right. and so i got hmm. one and i ignored it and then i got a second one and wow. i ignored it and then i got a third one and i was like you know what so i wrote the person back and i said i do not appreciate these threats Wow. I said, 
I'm working very hard. It's a pandemic. I have more demand that I can handle. And I, yeah. I really, I don't appreciate these threats about my availability and blah, 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 blah. I have a right not to accept clients from your blah, blah, blah. And at that time, I don't even remember if I had said to the EAP, I'm not taking clients or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Again, it's your job to have as many providers as you need to serve your members. It's not me, mm-hmm. my job right. to be constantly available. And then I included in there, I said, and this is my rate. I am not about to see 20 people at this rate in the San Francisco Bay Area where the average wow. rent is $2,000 for a one bedroom apartment. Oh my gosh. That's just for, for me to live. And the average rent for an office is $1,000 a month. Wow. Right? And I said, and these are just two expenses. We haven't mm. counted um, utilities and you know, I said, and you want me to see 20 people at this rate? I'm like, that's not happening. I am not filling <laughs> up my practice at this rate. Yeah, that's crazy. And I sent the email off. Lo and behold, <laughs> I get an email from a vice president of something that's like, hey, so we got your email and we're really sorry. We're not trying to threaten you. I'm like, yes, you are. <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> we're, not, we're, not, we're, not, we're not really trying to threaten you. However, we can't pay you X amount, which is like a $40 increase. Oh. And I was like, so wait, you could pay me $40 from before, but you just opted not to. Wow. Right? So they right. were literally offering me a $40 increase. And this is why wow. I say to folks, this sort of, you know, people get scared and they're like, oh my God, the big bad insurance company. They yeah. do. It's like bullies. They're, they're like bullies, you know, mm-hmm. you know, the, what the bully is doing is wrong it's not supported by any law right unless you're you know in a ring in a ring with mike tyson right (laughs) unless you're or whoever that new guy is connor or whatever his name is like um unless you're doing that right but it's not really supported but they do it anyway yeah right people need to understand that Mm a you can always leave the contract Mm -hmm. right you could you can just resign you can just be like i'm done right and you send in your notice and your 120 day notice or your 90 day notice or whatever it is, mm-hmm. I'm done. You can leave. There's no, like people, I think people think that there's like an insurance jail that you go to. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? no, I know. It's, I'm like, there's Everybody's no insurance. Everybody's afraid. I right? know. There's no I insurance. Know. There's no insurance jail, right? Now you right. can't commit fraud, which is the other thing people think, people say, oh, which drives me crazy. That's fraud. I'm like, it's not really, you know, fraud involves a deliberate deception right? to have a gain, mm. right? You know, it's like, I'm going to, I'm going to say to you, I love you, blah, 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 blah. So we could get married so I can become <laughs> a citizen. But really right. what I want to do is bring my wife from, you know, wherever, you know, my totally. family, you know. Right. And then I do that. And then once I become a citizen, I divorce, you know, that's fr- I'm deceiving you right. or or I'm saying that, you know, I saw you from nine to nine thirty, but I'm right. saying I saw you from nine to nine fifty five for a nine oh eight three seven when I actually saw you for a nine oh eight three two. Right. That right. kind of stuff is fraud. That's fraud. Right. If I submit a claim. <laughs> If I have 45 days to submit a claim and I submit a claim 47 days hmm. with the correct dates on it, but it's 47 days later, that's not fraud. Right. It'll just be like, you're past the date. Right. <laughs> now, I have to tell people, I have done that. And I've called the, the, the billing company. I'd be like, well, I was, I mean, it was true, but I was like, I had cancer. And so I was a little behind. <gasps> and they're like, oh okay, my we're so sorry. Um, all right. We'll, you know, we'll, and they did. They just, We'll process it for you. Now, wow. I'm not suggesting that you call up and tell people that you have cancer. Like, right. It's actually true. <laughs> or that right? you lie to get. But, you know, again, right. these kinds of... There's you know, flexibility country, even. There's flexibility in some parts of the contracts. Call up and say, this is... And it was true. This is what I was behind. I had surgery, blah, 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 blah. And they're like, we're so sorry. We'll go ahead and we'll process these. It was like four claims so it wasn't like I yeah. had 100 claims I think it's a right. little different right so I had yeah. like four claims that I had missed and they're like okay sure and they just they did it manually and they processed it um, wow so hopefully Amazing. that was helpful so helpful really um so so what about the people that say um I only have four slots for Aetna clients 
Is that does that follow these same principles that you're talking about right now? Because that's a little different, right? Because they're not telling the right. panel they're they're taking a break. They're basically just saying, I only have four slots. So, you know, and it's because Edna pays me $65. And I'm only gonna see, I'm only gonna take four people that pay that I get paid $65 for. Like, what do you think about that? I'm just let me check the time real quick too, because I've got somebody at 145. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I've got to try to okay. make this quick. Okay. So from my perspective, okay. Um, I wouldn't do that. Right. Okay. That's right. what I, I would. Too. I would. I. You know. So you have your slots. Right. You have your slots, and then if you don't want to take people, so like when people call me, you know, Aetna, Cigna, whatever, it's the first come, first serve, right? I don't. Right. I don't divide up. Well, I have three slots for Aetna and four slots for Blue Cross, and then. Like I don't divide up based on um, you know how much things are paying. If that's right. the case, then you should really work on just being private pay. Right. Okay. Just, yeah, because that's the other thing I see come up all the time. It's like people will say, "Well, I've only got four Medicaid slots because Medicaid only pays me fifty dollars," and you know, and I I I advise that's not a you can't. I don't think you can do that. Right. right. I mean, that's right. You can't do that because right. that no. that really but is that, discriminatory. But, Exactly. That 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 is the okay. payer source where you're saying I will only do blah blah blah, which is right. different than saying I no longer want to accept still for the payment, but then you put yourself so you're not taking any clients from that. Anybody. Interest. That's the difference. Right. right. Not that this is exactly it, or not that, oh well, I will take the Aetna commercial plans because they pay right. me more, but I won't right. take the Aetna medic. That's the payer source thing. That's, right, right. That's the payer right. source thing. Mm -hmm. um, so you just say, I'm not taking anybody from Aetna. And if they're paying you so low, ask for a raise. And if they say, no, just come off the panel. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right? You come off the panel exactly. and then you can see if Blue Cross is paying you $175 a session, then mm -hmm. guess what? You can just see Blue Cross clients. Like you right. can just come off all the other panels. But a lot of people are, you know, afraid or they want a variety. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's, I don't know, there's how many, uh, 11 million people in the San Francisco Bay Area. There's enough clients. Like, you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. There's enough yeah. Clients. Unless yeah, you're exactly. in a small town, I forget the small town in Pennsylvania <laughs> that the steel industry left, and, you know, it's like 5,000 oh, people yeah. and there's not much going on there. Then, you know, you probably can't be there and charge $300 a session or exactly. not. You know, it's going to be difficult mm -hmm. there. But right one of the outcomes of pandemic is that people are now like, okay, I guess we have to do things online. And right. so more people are now open. So you can see people throughout your state and things of that nature. So I would, that's what I would suggest. If you're yeah. on a panel that mm -hmm. is paying you really low. So the other thing that you can do, which is a little tricky, but I do it anyway, mm -hmm. is that you can take, if you have your fee schedule, you can take your fee schedule, you can black out the identifying information for the insurance company, and you can just say, this is what I'm being offered from another insurance company. Try to get a right? raise. Mm -hmm. Right, this is what I'm being offered from another insurance company. I'd like to be matched. I'd like to be matched by this, right? right. So a lot of contracts that you can't share the information in your terms of your fee. So you don't want to say this is what I'm being offered from Aetna, but mm -hmm. you just remove the identifying information and you just set it there so that they, you know, my sense is so that they know you're not making it up. Right. Right. And they can see, oh, Cigna is actually paying this, this person $85 and, and, you know, Aetna, we're only paying them $37. Right. Mm -hmm. So you can exactly. see. And I say, be willing to walk, either accept the answer or be willing to walk away. Except that they're going to give you, somebody just wrote, which is hilarious to me, that I think it was Aetna offered them 28 cents increase. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, oh, what? It probably cost them a dollar to send that email in terms of the, oh the person's gosh. salary. Um, yeah. So oh, you know. that's terrible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Okay. Okay. And the person I'm meeting with just messaged me that they're running a little late. So that's good. We don't need to rush completely. Um, okay. So, okay. So that's helpful. So you can't do that. That's, 
that's the, where the confusion I think comes in. Like, yes, okay, you can officially like say you're not accepting new people, but you can't like hold slots. Right, um, right. If you're gonna, you, you, you have to, you know, you're doing it, you're doing it for everybody. And that yeah. is, you know, but if you wanna, then you just put yourself in not accepting your clients. Yes. Yeah, okay, yeah. Cause I don't know if you've ever seen this. So, so one, cause I was giving that advice. I was like, no, you can't like just hold slots for, two Etnas and three anthems, you can't do that. And and somebody said they had a contract. They couldn't find they couldn't find a contract that asked when they when they signed the contract, how many of these clients are you willing to take at a time? Like like that they were allowed to actually choose the number. Like they were allowed to say, well, I'll only accept five of these clients on my caseload. I've never seen a contract like that. I don't know if you've ever seen anything like that. I haven't, I haven't seen a contract okay. like that, but I do um part of the california law is which is a you know it was a good idea but it wasn't that i don't think it had the impact that they thought it was going to have <laughs> which is you know to update the provider networks so uh -huh. that they didn't have all of these people who are not accepting new clients without actually knowing it that was part of the law that says you could do it for a year was to up okay. have the provided directories updated mm. um and so when they send these things out in California, they send these things out. They say, you know, how many clients can you see? And Beacon used to do this as well. You know, okay. how many, how many clients, how much space do you have? That is not to say you are co committing to those. You know, I have, oh, 10, I, see. I, I have 10 open spaces. Again, you can't, an insurance company, even though you have a contract, they can't tell you how to run your business. Right. Otherwise, you've become an employee right. of the insurance company, mm -hmm. which then means they're going to have to give you benefits. Exactly. Right, right now, you're a 1099, exactly. which, which means you run your business. As a 1099, you run your, which is why you get a 1099 in the mail. <laughs> exactly. Right? You run your business. So they may have seen like how many, you know, sometimes they do it like, well, how many clients do you see a week and that kind of stuff. A lot okay. of that stuff is just, is just filler. They don't really do I it. I bet that's what that was because she was in California, I think, the one that told me this. I bet that's mm -hmm. what it was. Yeah, that's part of okay. the SB 162. I think it asks how many openings do you have? But it's not it's not a commitment to say I have 10 openings and therefore I'm giving Blue, uh, Anthem Blue Cross these 10 slots. It's it's just filler. Okay. And, and if you've ever, like if you don't send in the fact stuff, then they'll call you. Mm -hmm. And if they call you, Clearly, the people that are doing the calling, they, you know, they are call center full. They don't, right? They're not, they're not connected to the inner workings. They're just trying to get this, the these forms and the answers to these questions on these forms completed to send to the insurance company. So you ask, they don't right. know anything about anything, right? Mm -hmm. They're just going, get the answer, send it in, get the answer, send it in. That's what they're doing. They're not trying to run your business so if she's in california i would say no that's because i get that all sometimes i forget to respond yeah <laughs> i do i do have to respond because it came as a like, oh i need to and you can also respond late like nothing happens like it'll say you must respond within 30 days and if you don't we'll call you and then yeah. they'll call you but no, there's no insurance jail i just you know <laughs> i fill it out and i send it back even if it's six weeks later um you know to just to be in compliance and and especially since I, you know, I'm talking about this stuff, I don't want to be somebody that's talking out of this side of my mouth and acting exactly. out of that side of my mouth yes. as well. So, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Well, thank you so much. This is so helpful. And is there anything you want to share? Like, do you do consultations for people or anything you want to talk about your business or anything you want to share with the audience? Um, well, my, my, the most exciting thing um, I do consultation. I'm a certified Gottman method couples therapist, but I'm not a Gottman uh, supervisor for certification, but okay. I do that. Uh, but my biggest thing is I do brain spotting and I do brain spotting trainings for black indigenous people of color, wow. uh, brain spotting trainer and also a brain spotting consultant. Um, so that's my Amazing. biggest thing. Um, and my, you can just type my name in. It's John R. Edwards LCSW in Google, and my website will pop up. Um, awesome. Which is westcoastpsychotherapy.com, but it'll pop up and you can see more about me and what I do.